Dark Nation, welcome back to the channel. Hey. Uh, you know, here on the Stack YouTube channel, okay, uh, we have dedicated our lives, committed our time to trying to educate people on Bitcoin, educate the masses on Bitcoin. And at least for us, you know, I think I would say that one of the most important areas of that is Bitcoin as it relates to the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's so important to us, obviously, the first thing is that we are from the continent. Secondly, we are looking at the wealthiest continent on earth right as yep. far as like natural resources and things goes mm -hmm. in fact i will go as far as to say that it is also the wealthiest continent intellectually okay because we know that there is evidence pointing to our ancestors it has been done it can be done again <laughs> executing on some increase <laughs> right <laughs> And we can see that our ancestors executed on some absolutely incredible things. Technology, language, mm. development. Look name at, it. Look at the, the uh, pyramids, man. <laughs> to this day, we're not getting a straight answer as to how the pyramids were built. Oh, no, don't worry. It was built by aliens. Yeah. <laughs> it was not built by aliens. It was built by Africans in Africa. Okay. And... Um, Somehow, some way, maybe we're expected to believe that uh, these people carried the massive, massive stones up the side of the pyramid. Do you think that happened? Yo, man, we carried it on our head. <laughs> <laughs> we have strong head. <laughs> Without my hands, balance it. <laughs> well, that would only be a testament to the incredible strength. It's almost like the Africans are the aliens. Maybe we are the aliens. Listen. You can try to come at us with stupid stuff, but then you see that it only makes us look better. Right? But what is incredible to me is that for a place that is so wealthy, we have never been able to find ourselves at a point in time where the African economy is operating under its own power without external influence. But you know, this is not a political matter. It's just a matter of freedom and human greed. That's how I look at it. And we'll dive further into that. What do you think, Double Up? Yep, that's what today's show is about. Africa right. and Bitcoin. Africa and Bitcoin. Well, before we dive into it, I'll start by asking you this, man. What would you say is your vision? If you could imagine Africa in the future running on a Bitcoin standard, what does that vision look like for you? That's a really good question. I love that. Yeah, come on. I have the juicy questions, you know. <laughs> yeah, then, uh, okay. uh, Carry on. Well, it would be nice if uh, Stack Nation was on the continent. We'll be there. Uh, joining the Bitcoiners in delivering what we believe is the Bitcoin standard. Yeah. And what do we say is a Bitcoin standard? Well, let's start with a good example of maybe, let's say, three of the new founded countries. Mm. Burkina Faso breaking away from France. Mali breaking away from France. Is it Senegal we're as well trying to break away from France right now? Yeah. Um, how <laughs> do they get on the Bitcoin standard? Yeah. Number one, we believe that money is a big issue. It's the way you and I exchange value. Yeah. It's the way energy is passed along. It's the way we store value mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So for, for nations like that to live on the Bitcoin standard, they need what's real money. You need what's really true money. Don't go by what Zimbabwe is doing right now, which is trying to peg back to gold. Because we all know the gold, if it's not mined by the Russians, it's mined by the Chinese. Mm -hmm. It's manipulated by the hedge funds here in America with the ETFs. You know, uh, the list goes on. So let's fix money, right? Bitcoin standard. First thing is fix money because that's what Bitcoin is here to fix. Yeah. So instead of taking loans from the IMF, the World Bank, the UN, and all this, uh, uh, the G, G7, G20s, whatever. Yeah. You don't need that. Mine your own energy. Store in a unbreakable blockchain. Mm -hmm. And build your country's resources. 
natural resources and store it in a currency that cannot be broken, mm. that is number one set mission. That will be my number one set mission. Fix the money. Man, <coughs> I think that's an incredible way to put it, how you outlined it there. It sounds very powerful and it sounds like a method that can definitely work. Because it seems like by fixing that money, you'll be fixing the integrity of your own country first. Sure, that's another big one, integrity. So you yeah. talked about uh, greed yeah. earlier. Right. So Bitcoin forces you to have integrity. Yeah. Because it's mathematics, right? So it takes mm. the politics and leadership out. Yeah. Right. And then now we know that our money is going through a specific utilization. Like it's a public blockchain. So you have all these agencies in your country, your departments yeah. uh, responsible for certain activities. The blockchain tells us how much money has been given to that agency. Mm -hmm. It's a gonna, we're going to have the public address. And we ensure that the governors... The the uh, the assigned uh, uh, peoples mm -hmm. for those roles. We we'll see where those funds are going. It's a public ledger. The work has been done. Let's not let's not use Nigeria for an, for well, an example. We don't know. we don't need to use Nigeria for an example, um, because this is the African continent as a whole. In fact, it is also a global situation, right? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> By the way, last time we used Nigeria <laughs> as an example in a video, we got banned on this. That equal to the death of our channel as well. Yeah. So, but that only speaks to this freedom that we are talking about here right now, because given that we are in an environment where there should be freedom of speech, right? Mm. Um, there is nothing that we did that was very radical. No, was it? Right. We were actually pointing out factual matters that were happening on the ground at the time. Yep. So, but if the truth that you're reporting is not one that some people want to hear, it seems that they have the ability to suppress you and take out your freedom of speech. I will point out that these people are only able to do this because of money. They are wealthy. What are we going to do? We cannot sue them. It's the same thing as well when you take it back to the African nation, right? There's a small group of people who control the money across the world. Mm -hmm. And these people have the ability to debase the currency of other nations. Mm. Even though, when you look at the value provided across the board for each of these parties, the African nations always seem to be providing more than the others. I'll give you an example. Um, it is no secret that France has been in various African countries. It's no secret that there are some corporations that are out there in these African nations extracting their natural resources, right? Um, it seems like a great opportunity to do business on equal terms with respect. But that is not what happens, right? Yep. Well, they come in, take the natural resources back to their country, refine those natural resources and create products with it, and then bring it back to the same place that they store the resources and sell it to them for a serious markup. Sure. Most of the time, they don't even bring it back. They sell it to the rest of the world, build a nation, and the little that they bring back. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So the question becomes, why is it that you people have so little respect for the African nation that you feel like all you can do is to come in and rip them off. I would say that why is it that the Africans can respect themselves? That is the thing too. Um, well, it's one of those things you also have to roll it back, right? Mm. It's almost like um, the Palestinian situation mm. that is going on. Mm. For some people, that uh, this whole incident started on, you know, that day. The 7th, October 7th. Right. But <laughs> at the same time, if you decide to be thorough, you see that it rolls back a far, far way. It's very important to speak the truth. Yeah. If you look at the map right now, mm. it says Israel. Uh, yeah. Palestine has been deleted. You know what is interesting? When I was on the Qatar flight, right? Heading to Ethiopia, mm -hmm. Israel was not on the map. 
<laughs> but let's not go into that one right now. <laughs> All you have is just Gaza and some other thing. I guess depending on who you are, it is there or it's not there. Hmm. You know. But you know, the Gaza was there. Yeah. But this is what I was saying. Uh, what the reason why I bring that up is because uh, Africans are very kind people. Very to nice accept people. It. To accept it. Well, they're 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 accepting. There is this idea of Ubuntu. Yeah. Look out for each other. Yeah. Because nothing belongs one hundred percent to you. Yep. The land belongs to, to God. God. Yep. So naturally, if someone is moving in that way, you can see that. Hey, if you come by and you say, "Hey, we want some of this," yeah, like, well, yeah, have, have yeah. some of it. Yep. But you don't know that you are selling it to the devil. Yep. With crazy plans. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I can see how you so, you you suddenly fall Sell into a sort of yep. situation like yep. that. But fine, no problem. Um, as we move forward, and we now find ourselves in a modern day, 2024, where everyone has social media, everyone is able to, I mean, we're all global now. You can mm-hmm. see everything across anywhere from the wall. It then comes back up in question, as we see a bunch of crazy things happening. Why are we not fixing these things when... Uh, we're in a world that claims to be all about equality. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you see, equality fades the darker your skin gets. Uh, right? Which is absolutely asinine to me as well because the people who are literally championing this um, equality thing, they're doing it in an environment that is not even needed in. Right? For example, uh, if you look at Let's take the feminist movement, for example. No, right? let's let's not go there. Well, it's fine. <laughs> let's be conscious of the time. <laughs> the, oh, because the feminist movement. <laughs> we can talk forever. Listen, right? no, we know that we don't have to dive into. I'm just going to give like a quick example. <coughs> uh, because there's really no argument for the feminist movement. Okay, y'all are a dying breed. It's fine. You guys want to argue? Argue away. When they say when when that guy said buy a dog and die alone, <laughs> that, that is listen. There is no getting around that fact. But. The point is, we are living in an environment where women can do a whole lot more. Women in the West are more free than any other time in history, right? True. But if you go to these other nations, like the ones that in the Middle East, right, mm-hmm. which the US is doing business with, mm-hmm. right, uh, you see that it's a different situation there. However, there is some order in their society, okay? But you have people here screaming at the top of their lungs in the name of equality saying that women need equal rights but uh, when you look all around them it's just regular men waking up every day and going to work was it was it was it Elon Musk that said that he cares about actually acting on what you believe uh-huh. than the perception yeah or you know people just talk about women yeah, right exactly. women right exactly. but you don't pay women equally you don't pay for for them to to have kids <laughs> and take vacation for four months well, it's just a bunch of talk it no is a, action it is a bunch of talk and that's and that is exactly what i'm saying that if you look at the situation how long have we been hearing about this women's equality thing Okay. I mean, there should be no reason why a woman should go back to work was it three weeks or three months or two, two months after they've given birth they need longer than that to recover well, well but it's not happening of course this will not happen it's not happening it's That's talk. The, you know what I mean it is all about protests and the people who make money from it and these people who are also leading are buying are doing business with people who have very different views on women, yeah. okay? Yeah. But then at the same time, they turn around and go to Africa and try to tell Africa to change their ways or they will get sanctioned for the same thing that the people in the Middle East are doing, yet you're okay doing business with them. You see what I'm saying? And it's Bitcoin in Africa. Exactly. So, Because <laughs> if, if you trade in Bitcoin, they can't sanction you. Thank you. You see what I'm saying? And furthermore, if you have Bitcoin, you have every authority to tell someone, do not talk to us, leave us alone, do not influence. And I think that this is important because we see right now that there's a lot of African leaders who are giving that push back to the West, right? Mm-hmm. So what better time than now to hop on a monetary standard that allows you complete autonomy over your country's value where no one can manipulate it. There is no 
head of state to come and kill. The thing is just superior money. I mean, yeah, talk about it. So I look at it from a mining point of view, and I still feel like Africa has a serious edge mm. over a lot of countries that they not that they do not know that they have right now. What right. is that edge? They want to believe that okay, maybe Bitcoin is run by the U.S. government. They mm. don't trust Bitcoin. Uh, all the things that the IMF and the World Bank has told them. Mm-hmm. The same IMF and World Bank as of last week yeah. is changing their story about Bitcoin. The the World Economic Forum already changed their story, but that's a different <laughs> story. But African leaders, instead of then going back to the core knowledge yeah. and access to information that they have, yeah. they rather depend and rely on some IMF or World Bank to tell them what to do and how to think. Yeah. Now, with the natural resources that Africa has, it has enough energy mm. to to be dedicated to Bitcoin, mm. to mine Bitcoin, to create its own form of energy and store of value. Mm. That even if in the future, let's say, a big nation like the United States says, "Oh, they're dumping Bitcoin," all those resources come back to Africa. At least you have a money mm-hmm. that is trusty, that mm-hmm. that yeah. is trustworthy, yeah. that is mathematically prov- proven yeah. to be secure. Yeah. Right, so like, oh, you don't trust the U.S. government, you don't trust Russia, you don't trust China. Fine. How about you convert and actually adopt money that is actually more secure than any money anybody else could ever create? Exactly. So you haven't you haven't trust issues does not mean that you cannot use the same technology. Yes, I think that's that's where that is what makes this Bitcoin revolution so beautiful. Right, is the fact that at the end of the day. We don't need someone who is a. We don't need a head of state or a centralized point, right? Like the Fed, mm-hmm. <clears throat> to be able to. Uh, how would you say orchestrate the operation of money? Mm-hmm. You were showing me a chart earlier mm-hmm. <laughs> with how the financial system is set up, the fiat system, and the amount of entities that are involved in that process is flabbergasting. Before the money gets to you. Before it gets to you, right? Ah, but that's because you're holding empty value. You're holding empty value. That's why that stuff is that way. But at the grassroots level, as long as people can communicate, provide value, and exchange value, okay? That's all you need for an economy to run. That's all you need. You don't need someone controlling it. There you go. Like the Federal Reserve. Oh, we got to increase interest rate, reduce interest rate, just messing with it. Yeah. No. There's no need for that. There's no need for that. How about you in- increase your wealth? Okay. Why, why don't you put better interest rates in your pocket by purchasing Bitcoin or encouraging other people around you to understand Bitcoin? Because I was recently in Ethiopia, right? And here's what I see. If you're a taxi driver in Ethiopia, for example... Uh, most of the places that you drive to, like say within the city range, mm-hmm. um, maybe things might come up to three dollars for that trip. That's that is, yes, yeah. in, in US dollars. In US, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it comes to yes, yeah, like three. That is, uh, three hundred per, mm-hmm. black market rate. <laughs> okay, yeah. if not, it's much less. Now, you could keep doing that, right? Keep doing your trips as normal, and then maybe tomorrow, the currency might get devalued. And now all of a sudden you're making the same drive, but you see that your profits are subsided because you're using the same amount of gas. It's happening I mean, in Nigeria right now. Right. And until you recognize as a driver that, hey, wait, I'm going here. It's costing me more gas now. I'm doing the same amount of trips, but I'm still coming out on the losing end. I will tell you right now that if you are a driver who is, maybe say every other trip, you take that three dollars and you put it into Bitcoin. The scenario is definitely a whole lot more different for you, because once your money is now in Bitcoin, it's protected from debasement. Mm-hmm. It's protected from the banks who might or may or may or not give you your money. And most importantly, you are now able to transact with anyone globally, and you are instantly beginning to build generational wealth because this Bitcoin is not just for you but you can pass it on to your kids I'm so excited for the younger generation in Africa because as long as our generation is able to hold this Bitcoin and educate the younger people okay, 
listen, I, I'm not ignoring the older people. Definitely, the older people can join in, but I think that most of y'all are a lost cause. Not to be mean, but they just don't want to unlearn what they've learned. Yeah, um, yeah, they don't want to unlearn what they've learned, and I think that uh, to a certain extent, maybe some of them have gone through too much oppression, oppression and Financial problems. Trauma. Yeah, that you they've cannot been cooked slowly. Exactly, so you cannot <laughs> roll it back now, right? So what we are aiming here for is the future on Bitcoin. Yeah. And I think that just like that example I gave there with a the taxi driver, there are so many professions uh, in on the African continent. And with the rising of the new breed of leaders that we're seeing now, I think that that is going to continue and continue. It seems like the right time to start bringing in some Bitcoin into the picture. In fact, while I was in Addis, this was a bit concerning to me and I'm going to go back because I need to make it to River now. There is Bitcoin mining operations being set up by the River now. Okay. Mm -hmm. But when you're in Addis Ababa and you tell the people I want to go to River now, everyone says it's unsafe. And so I keep asking myself, how come it's unsafe for me to go there? But it's safe for a bunch of white people who are serving a Bitcoin miners over there right now. <laughs> that reminds me of the way the old, the old way Africa got captured. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, sounds like what's going on in some piece of forest in Nigeria. <laughs> exactly. All the gold, all the uh, uranium, everything is just being wiped out. But hey, Boko hey. Haram is not allowing you to go there. Hey, exactly, exactly. So people will not go because they say they're worried about... Um, uh, okay. conflicts and stuff listen it is very likely that if I'm going there and there's conflict and someone comes out and they're doing anything it is probably the uh, the thieves and you know what I mean by the thieves the people who are yep. trying to steal the resources of that area but <clears throat> nonetheless I think that's something that is going to get uh, flushed out mm -hmm. you know and it is it is so important right now when you look at the the amount of skills here's another area of wealth for africa i mentioned earlier the highest you know the richest intellect okay mm -hmm. uh when you look at the western war and you look at <laughs> the most people who were doctors and graduating is africans right Don't stop me. uh the most engineers I mean, other than maybe the Indians and the Chinese. Chinese. Okay. Yeah, it's Africans. So Africans are here with a monumental amount of skills um, and other certifications and know how of other things. But you're using your time and your energy to generate money for a system that is just turning right back around and abusing you, does not listen to you. And will probably give your money to people who want to go brush out a whole um, <coughs> entire. Uh, to put it simply, give your money to people who want to go commit genocide, possibly. That want to or uh, is committing well, genocide. <laughs> exactly. So I think that everybody has to be able to sit back and really reflect on themselves. However, we also know that there's a difficulty here in the West, but I know that my African people are awake. Because if you ask me, I think that the continent is calling us back right now because it is on the rise. The awakening yes. has begun. Yes. So it's probably time to take our talents back that way and enjoy the life that is there and um, bring, you know, Africa into the future and the place that is yeah, rightfully supposed to be. You know, what's funny? Respect. Yeah. you know what's funny the the airline was called welcome to the future that oh. was the theme i gave it oh yeah because I, I really i still believe in <laughs> people are like man you got screwed up so bad in nigeria you still think about that country man you're getting screwed up in america every day <laughs> <We're getting laughs> screwed up. Oh, you're just God. you're just screwing you slowly <laughs> you're cooking you slowly it's best I mean, to get cooked listen, fast I'll, I'll say this man that was not that was not something that was a negative because let me let me roll back here how many people got a job because of what you were doing Mm. You know what I mean? How many people's life changed yeah. because of what you were doing? Yeah. How many people caught, even if it's inspiration, that they are capable of doing something because of what you're doing? Mm. You know what I'm saying? That is not something that people do every day. I have to say, though, that's one part, that's one initiative that I think Bitcoin fix, fixes mm -hmm. that the aviation industry cannot fix in Nigeria. Why is that? It's the open borders. 
So there is the issue between the English speaking nations and the French speaking nations mm -hmm. where you can travel to, where you can't travel to, the old issue yeah. about visas. Yeah. Burundi is opening up their visa. Um, South, South Africa is trying. Ghana has already opened it to African Americans, yeah. but not to the entire African countries. Mm -hmm. Imagine African countries being able to transact with one another without having to go through the BIS system, oh. through the SWIFT system. Oh, yeah. Like you're just interacting back and forth in Bitcoin or in SATs. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, I I mean, think that's naturally going to happen. That, that is that, the answer. Because if you, look at, if you look at Bitcoin ownership, right, who owns the Bitcoin? It's the younger generation. Uh, from our generation, backward. Mm -hmm. we, are the, we are going to be the majority population soon. So I think that that's just going to be like a natural sort of evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that has to happen. You know, I I don't know if I tweeted it, but I said, you know, they, they killed the guy, they killed a the man, but they did not kill his idea. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this idea of the United States of Africa, I think that Bitcoin is the checkmate move. It's in motion. We just need more people to say it. Like yeah. I no longer have to get on a plane flight to go mm -hmm. to Ethiopia to have a business transaction. Yeah. One that could just wire you the Bitcoin. Exactly. I don't need to go have a bank in Ethiopia. Big lightning. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Wallet to wallet. Yeah. Lightning activity. Just major like major savings. <laughs> exactly. Major time saved. And and here's the thing, you know, people always kind of look at it sometimes like, oh, you're doing this means you're against the government. No one is against the government. We're actually, we're actually making the government more yeah, efficient. The government should carry on. We love what they're doing. Um, you know, but <laughs> if what you're doing is not up to par, then, you know, the sun will burn it down. <laughs> it's just what it is. Nobody's touching it. People got to keep moving. Yeah. People got to yeah, keep moving. Exactly. Uh, there is no need for wars and all of that kind of stuff, you know. I know that there's always going to be intertribal wars and things like that, which is actually nice that uh, those things should stop because the amount of prosperity and promise that is uh, on the African continent, it is a shame that we have to be fighting each other and stuff like that. In fact, we know that in some cases, the French pays for these wars. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 starting, it's starting to show up more. Absolutely. People are starting to identify where all this weaponry is coming from because I'm sure no, we sure know they, they're not making those, those, those weapons by themselves. They say 2024 and a year of truth. <laughs> Everything under the sun <laughs> shall come to light. <laughs> but listen, I think that the, the future of Bitcoin in Africa is everything right now. It is absolutely powerful. And um, I know that we'll capture this thing, no doubt. Uh, there's a bunch of people in other areas that they wish they could, but I think that their brains are too old to understand this kind of game. I said it a very long time ago that Bitcoin has checkmate. I don't know, any government you want to name. Somehow, El Salvador is the only one that opened their eyes to that. To this day, El Salvador is the only one that is pretty much about to pay off the IMF, right? For the loans. Mm -hmm. I think that should say something to people. But, yeah. What are, any uh, anything else you have to add, sir? Karen, that's that's all I have to say about Africa and this Bitcoin situation right now. I can speak more about my experience in Utopia, but you know, we'll probably do that in another video or something. Yep, but, yep, yeah. yep, yep. I, I would like to close to say that um, there's been a lot of slow cooking, mm. uh, not just in the West, but I think to the African nations, mm. to the African people. Yeah. And we're trying to awaken that mindset to believe that you can believe in yourself. Africa can do it as well. And that you are working yourself because even the book of Solomon said it. Yeah. Everything is money. Like you wake up in the money in the, in the morning and you and, and you store your energy, you store your resources in yeah. money. Everything is stored in money. Yeah, we must fix the money. Africa fixes the money. We fix all the problems. We fix the problems. Absolutely. Well, hey, <coughs> uh, listen, folks, uh, there's a few things that we would like for you all to check out, okay? Because first of all, I realized that uh, maybe you want to learn more about Bitcoin, okay? Or maybe you want to be able to trade some coins and make some extra money in order to be able to buy Bitcoin, but you do not have the skill, lacking in skill levels, okay? Just like a lot of other people I met out there in Africa, and I was trying to teach them some things. You understand what I'm saying? But fear not, because we got you. First things first, okay? You can hop over to our website. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I was trying to save myself. Oh, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can hop over to our website, stackfin.com. Okay, over there, you'll notice that we have some services available to you. 
maybe you want to understand how you can apply some bitcoin in your business we have some bitcoin consultation or maybe it's just something that is in your you know in your personal life and stuff like that i especially like the story about the uh the um the neighborhood party double o yes right and how your neighborhood used bitcoin as a means to be able to save for the kids <laughs> can you tell us a bit about that it's it we're so much in the money right now <laughs> <laughs> next next neighborhood party is coming up and people are like should we sell the bitcoin or should we just raise money so yes we have our annual uh neighborhood fall fest yeah and spring fest as well and basically the whole idea is to bring the community together mm-hmm. something that you know america has been liking lately yeah. and allow all the kids in the neighborhood to come together play get to know each other get ready for the school year have a blast yeah so we had some money left over the last one and we said hey let's invest it and then like yeah you guys should invest in bitcoin mm-hmm. and most of them were like uh really kenny i saw out then my this this was my proposal yeah if bitcoin crashes and goes to zero yeah i would personally pay for that with my money but if bitcoin goes up then we all get to enjoy it this is how you know bitcoin is insurance look at the confidence that these people insure these people's money if it goes to zero i'll pay myself (laughs) i'll pay everybody back this is the good news yeah bitcoin has doubled since we invested this was last year it was last year right yes was there by possibility it was actually going to go to zero? <laughs> no, but the good news though is that everybody in the in the in the community yeah. are now coming to me to say, "Hey, Kenny, your next tra- trading class, I want to be involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, please teach me about Bitcoin. I want to learn about Bitcoin." Well, look at but that. But what I'm trying to make sure doesn't happen though is that people don't come to Bitcoin for the profits. I'm trying to get people to adopt no. Bitcoin for Bitcoin. <clears throat> it's fine. I mean, you know, it's baby steps, man. I mean, if you think about it, someone has to start somewhere. As long as they get in there, you know, they get to experience Bitcoin. Yeah. Come for the profits, stay for the freedom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, listen, these are just some of the strategies that you can apply using the Bitcoin standard to transform the way you interact with money. Okay. Maybe you just want to understand the basics. We also have a mastering Bitcoin class there. And of course, there is the trading session. Which Seven are, days long, man. 7 to 9 p.m. 7 days long. Yeah? If poverty is in your life, it's fine. We got you. We'll probably set up something. We made it seven days because the world was created in seven days. Uh-huh. <laughs> and on the seventh day, you guys you become a master. You become a master trader. <laughs> you, you can trade all those meme coins and use it to buy more Bitcoin. <laughs> exactly. Listen, one way or another, try to get yourself to the top. Listen, our friends BK Crypto is also on board with us, okay? Now, if you're trying to understand a little bit more about the crypto space in general. Okay? How not to get rock pulled. How not to get rock pulled, <laughs> all of those kind of things. You can hop on here. Actually, they have a, I think they have a free... Yeah, a free, yeah, it's uh, a bunch of free stuff on there. It's a free, free consultation. Yeah, sp- yeah, there is the free 15-minute consultations. And yep. I, I think there's a book, right? Yep. Fundamentals. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so a crypto mastery kit free of charge. So you can also hop on there. Support our friends. Tell them we sent you. You probably see us over there as well, too, because we offer our services over there. I think we might actually have a a live show later on today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, listen. With the crew. We will see you all with the crew later on today. But uh, I think we covered it all now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you can show them the mimple. We just went through the Bitcoin halving. Oh, yeah. The Bitcoin halving just went down. Ooh, yeah, look yeah. at that. Spicy, spicy situation. Yeah, and it's so expensive right now to buy, to, to buy, to buy on the main chain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Layer one. This is why there is something called Lightning Network. Yes, sir. Here are some of the things that we'll teach you if you sign up for our Bitcoin education course. Here's what is actually interesting. All of this information you can find on the internet for free. Mm-hmm. Okay. But... Like they say, you can either walk around the block or you can get dropped off in front of the building and just valet walk inside. <laughs> the choice is yours. We give you the valet access. Hey. But of course, you gotta pay for valet. Listen, come on, man. Do we look like slaves? <laughs> you think we want to be working for free? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so yes, the Bitcoin halving just happened, ladies and gentlemen. And if you know anything about the Bitcoin halving, you will understand. <laughs> it's a stock split. <laughs> No, just kidding. Though. Of monumental <laughs> proportions. I mean, look at it. I mean, isn't the behavior pretty much similar? Oh, yes. You can see the 
said that was the first halving, rip to the moon, okay? But then we thought we had reached the moon, but the moon shifted up. So we pull back and you see another halving there, ripage, maximum ripage, okay? We thought we had reached the moon, no. Boom, another move, another move. So I have one question for you. Where do you think we are going next? Because they say, they say history rhymes. History rhymes? No, yeah. not according to Peter Schiff. According to Peter Schiff, from here we're going, we're going straight down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely incredible. Listen, uh, subscribe to the channel, even though you know YouTube's mission these days is to make sure that we're not successful enemies of progress. Guys, we, 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 we've, we've been considering leaving YouTube lately, yeah. we've just been on X a lot lately. Listen, we'll probably. Um, we're also over there on X, obviously, as Stackfin. Uh, and of course, Spotify as Stack, but we don't have anything posted there. We've not posted in a while. Yes, because at some point in time, it feels like you start becoming a technology slave, running and chasing platform after platform, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you don't have a life. Yep. Okay. Your happiness should come first. Build a business. Oh, yeah. There live happily. Exactly. And Bitcoin. Well, uh, anything Wait a second. else? Yeah, something's missing. What's our Bitcoin standard book? Oh, somebody's reading it right now. <laughs> so you okay. see, the book is not just for decoration. <laughs> but that is also a really good book. Bitcoin yeah, 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 yeah. Bitcoin and Black Zay. America. Yeah, Bitcoin Z, man. That man wrote that book. Pick I up mean, that book and read. He did that. So, incredible. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, incredible times. Until next time, prison out. Double O. Hey.